Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. Today we're going to look at a couple of interesting lost media cases. Whilst the internet is definitely one of humanity's most significant achievements to date, if you've been around since the early days then you've seen some stuff. With the rise of social media in the early 2000s and the massive influx of user generated content, over time there's a lot of media that's gone missing. Among these lost pieces of media there are some things that are so disturbing that they were intentionally removed from the internet. Some of them were up for quite a while before new policies meant they had to be removed, whilst others had only ever been seen by a very select few and they were never intended for public release. It's not surprising then that there are entire groups of people who are dedicated to seeking out, restoring and archiving these lost medias. In a lot of cases this endeavour turns out to be extremely difficult or even impossible. One particularly notorious piece of lost media is the Brooke Slocum video. Brooke Slocum was an 18 year old woman living with her 25 year old boyfriend Charles Oppenier in Wyoming, Michigan. The couple were expecting a baby and Brooke was 8 months pregnant. They'd been having a lot of financial difficulty and at one point they were forced to live in their car. To earn money they used Craigslist to offer sexual favours for money. Their roommate later stated that the couple had an unusual open relationship. According to her friends, Brooke wasn't happy with this situation but she felt that she had to do what she had to do to make money. Her family, most notably her father, tried to talk her out of this lifestyle multiple times. He was very concerned about his daughter meeting complete strangers from the internet and he believed that she could do much better. Allegedly Brooke had promised her dad multiple times that she would change her lifestyle but unfortunately she never did. Her dad would later say, I did my best and it just didn't work out. In a later interview Brooke's roommate stated that she felt that Oppenier was pimping Brooke out. She said that Charles Oppenier was very controlling of Brooke and she may not have been a willing participant in a lot of the Craigslist encounters. On July the 12th, 2014, Brooke posted on Craigslist. She was asking for donations. She said that she needed $50 to buy medicine. She soon got a reply. The man on the other side said that he wasn't interested in donating money. Instead, he wanted to offer her $120 in exchange for sex. Brooke told him that she was 8 months pregnant but this didn't seem to matter. He wasn't bothered by this and he still insisted on meeting her. Brooke's boyfriend didn't seem bothered either but when the couple were preparing to meet this mystery man, one of Brooke's friends, Corey, said, you're risking your life if you do this. You don't know who you're meeting. Sadly, his words turned out to be prophetic and the couple never returned home. On July the 13th, 2014, local police received an anonymous phone call about a suspicious man in a mask looking into vehicles parked near Wyoming's Gizon Park. When the police arrived, nobody was there, but they did notice that one of the vehicles appeared to be abandoned. Two days later, they noticed the car still hadn't been moved. They conducted a quick search of the area and soon made a chilling discovery. Under a pile of sticks and dirt, they found the headless body of a man. It was Charles Oppenier. There was no trace of Brooke Slocum and she was reported missing. The authorities, with the help of Slocum's roommates, gained access to her Craigslist accounts and this led them to the Gmail account of a man named Brady Ostrike. With this evidence in hand, on July the 17th, the police dispatched a tactical team to surround Ostrike's house. Unfortunately, they couldn't enter straight away as the search warrants were still being prepared. This delay turned out to be fatal. At some point during that evening, Ostrike left his house and got into his car. When police attempted to stop his car, he began to flee. 
The resulting police chase ended with Brady Ostrike crashing his vehicle into an overpass. Upon searching his vehicle, they found Ostrike dead. He had shot himself before they could get to him. Sadly, they also discovered Slocum's naked body in the vehicle's trunk. She and her baby were dead. Ostrike had strangled her earlier that day. Tragically, Greg Slocum, Brooke's father, was driving around town looking for his daughter at the time. He happened to be driving by when the crashed vehicle was being searched by the police. He later remarked that, as soon as we crossed that Burton Street overpass, my heart fell into my stomach and I knew my baby was up there. A search of Brady Ostrike's house quickly followed. Inside, police found a stockpile of weapons, which included swords, crossbows and guns. They also discovered syringes, cattle prods, medical gloves and handcuffs. But the most chilling discovery in the filthy interior of the building was the presence of several restraints, a pulley system with ropes and a dog cage. There were also four video cameras. Brady had recorded hours of footage in which he documented the horrific torture and slow death of Brooke Slocum. He tortured her for five days before she died and the whole thing had been caught on camera. Amazingly, some parts of this footage was released to the public. The released video shows Ostrike installing, untangling and even wearing bondage equipment like chains and ropes connected to the ceiling near a dog cage. The full video was apparently so disturbing that the police ruled out ever releasing the whole thing. This means that someone had to go through it and edit out the relevant pieces that could be released to the public. It also means that Somewhere locked away in a police archive, the torture and death of Brooke Slocum exists as a recorded media. The likelihood of it being available online somewhere, even in the deepest depths of the dark web, seems unlikely, but there's always that slim possibility of it being leaked or hacked, and therefore rumours of its existence persist to this day. Now, whilst the Brooke Slocum video definitely does exist somewhere, there's some lost media cases where we can't really be sure if the material ever existed in the first place. A video titled LOL Superman is a perfect example of this kind of fabled lost media. Interestingly, the possibility of it never having existed, instead of discouraging those who seek to archive it, had quite the opposite effect. Around 2006 was probably the heyday for shock video sites. Things like Rotten.com or Ogrish hosted a myriad of disturbing videos containing graphic violence and death. It was during this period that an alleged video taken during the 9-11 World Trade Center attack was published. It was given the typically edgelord title LOL Superman. The video, it said, was recorded at the World Trade Center Plaza just after the first plane hit and allegedly showed people jumping from the building in extremely graphic detail. On September 11th, 2001, the first plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center between the 93rd and 99th floors. The impact resulted in a massive explosion that completely demolished the affected floors and started multiple fires. It also destroyed all the stairwells and elevator shafts, cutting off all evacuation routes. This meant that people in and above the impact zone found themselves in a death trap. Soon, people were being choked by black smoke and toxic fumes produced by burning jet fuel and office carpets. Any survivors were forced to break windows to avoid being suffocated. However, it soon became obvious that their efforts were in vain. The fire and smoke were spreading too fast for any chance of rescue. The survivors would soon face an impossible decision suffer a prolonged painful death in the flames and smoke or jump to their deaths hoping to end the nightmare quickly. It's believed that at least a hundred people jumped from the North Tower that day. 
it's also worth pointing out that not all of those who fell from the towers jumped willingly. The windows in the World Trade Center were only 22 inches wide, and as people were in a panic and fighting for a gasp of air, a lot of people may have been pushed as multiple people crowded the windows. The World Trade Center Plaza, located directly below the building, was littered with bodies and debris. An account from a man who was there at the time describes the sheer horror of the plaza on that day. This man was an emergency medical specialist named Ernest Armstead. Armstead had been tasked with placing black tags on the bodies in the plaza. These tags were a sign for the medical team that the people wearing them were either deceased or beyond help. At one point, Ernest went to place the tag on a well-dressed, elegant woman, and she suddenly spoke to him. She said, I'm not dead. Call my daughter. I'm not dead. Armstead was horrified. Whilst it was a miracle that she was still alive, her lower body was completely mangled beyond recognition. She must have landed legs first, and somehow her head had remained undamaged. Armstead tried to calm her down, but the woman didn't seem to hear him. She was just repeating over and over that she wasn't dead. The woman couldn't see the state of her own body. She was beyond any hope of being saved. Her body was completely mangled. Armstead began to have a panic attack and retreated from the plaza. He said that he could hear the cries of the woman repeating over and over, insisting that she wasn't dead. To this day, the identity of this mysterious woman remains unknown. Now, coming back to the LOL Superman video. There is footage of people falling from the North Tower, but most of it is taken from a distance. Allegedly, the LOL Superman video was filmed at the World Trade Center Plaza and contains close-up footage of jumpers impacting the ground at high speeds, as well as showing the aftermath of these collisions. In 2015, on 4chan, somebody mentioned that they remembered seeing such a video, and this sparked a heated discussion as others also recalled seeing it. With this, the search was on. All they had was a single frame, allegedly a thumbnail from the LOL Superman clip. Despite the creation of a lost media wiki page dedicated to LOL Superman, there wasn't any significant progress in this case for years, and the video was largely considered to not really exist. After all, there are a lot of troll posts on 4chan about supposed snuff films that don't really exist. The Grifter is one that comes to mind. However, in 2022, a Reddit user named The Sketchy Dude started looking for more information about this video. His post led to LOL Superman receiving a lot of new attention. Hundreds of people began to scour the internet in search of the video. It was soon established that that single frame that was supposedly from the video was actually recorded way before 9-11, but a few interesting things did come up. Many who had allegedly seen the video in the early 2000s remember that the clip started with two men walking up the stairs towards the World Trade Center Plaza. This detail is important because in footage captured by a news cameraman, at some point it shows two people walking up the stairs towards the World Trade Center Plaza. These individuals could potentially be responsible for recording the infamous lost video. Those involved in the search for the LOL Superman video sent out two letters. One was addressed to the 9-11 Museum in New York, and it proved completely fruitless. The other letter was sent to the FBI, requesting access to the footage under the Freedom of Information Act. The response they received was quite interesting. The FBI wrote back, stating that the requested material is located in an investigative file, which is exempt from disclosure. Whilst this doesn't completely confirm that the footage exists, the response is intriguing. Perhaps the video isn't just a 4chan prank after all. There may be a time when these sort of videos come to light. I don't think I would want to see them, to be honest. I feel like these kind of videos leave a weird scar on my mind. I can't explain it, but... There's certain videos that I feel like will always stay with me, and I don't really have much desire to add more to that list. 
I've got my own piece of lost footage and I think I may have spoken about this on a very old video but I'm going to bring it up here again. This is something that I'm not sure whether it's a dream or a memory but I remember one time when I was a kid I was watching the TV on my own and I was flicking through the channels. What followed was a typically scary scene. The camera panning across a misty swamp with a lot of gnarled trees in the background. When it gets about halfway across the swamp, the camera stops. At that point, some sort of clown pops up out of the water. The only way I can describe it is as if it was a giant weeble toy. You know those things with the weights on the bottom, but it had a clown's head on the top? But the most disturbing thing is that chained to the back of this clown was the drowned body of a man. From what I remember, I immediately turned over the channel. I was terrified. It must have been on TV around the mid to late 80s. Like I say, I'm not sure whether this is a memory or a dream. Over the years, I've tried to search for it to see if it exists and I've never been able to find anything. So, I don't know. It's a long shot. Maybe someone who's watching this knows what I'm talking about. There's a very slim chance that it exists. But yeah, that's my own personal piece of lost media. So, I hope you found the video interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Big shout out to the patrons who are helping support the channel. Thank you very much indeed. Here's some more videos you might enjoy. Until next time, goodbye.